Hand me my hat, Finley! I'm going in! Greetings and welcome to my Murder at Castle Nathria Hearthstone Duels card review. The first card we're talking about today is Suspicious Usher. It's right here on the screen. It's a 1 mana 1 3 priest minion with battle cry. Discover legendary minion. If your opponent guesses your choice, they get a copy. Hmm, intriguing. Now, this has a lot of implications in general. Like, this is not your usual discover where you just pick whatever's best for you. You have to consider way more variables than usual, like, especially in duels. Like, what are the opponent's treasures? How well can they use what minion? How well can use can I use this minion? And of course, it all comes down to how good your opponent is at guessing your train of thought. So yeah, maybe you see two really good minions, and then you really have to wonder what is your what does your opponent think I'm gonna take? Try to avoid to give him that thing. So yeah, like, like the situations this can generate are almost endless. Like. And it's gonna be a new way to think about this guy every single time you play him. And I love that. However, there's probably no duels deck for this guy right now. It's still a super fun card and I really enjoy that it exists. So let's move on to the next card. It's Primordial Wave. Primordial Wave is a 3 mana charm and nature spell. It's an epic card. And it reads, transform enemy minions into ones that cost one less, and friendly minions into ones that cost one more. Now, historically, both of these effects have been used separately in Hearthstone. There was Devolve, which was a two mana spell. That was the transform enemy minions into ones that cost one less part. That has seen a lot of play because it's generally very good, because random minions are usually way weaker than the ones people put in their decks, and removes buffs and all sorts of effects. Which is a good control tool. And the second part, the evolved part, friendly minions uh, get transformed into minions that cost one more, was also used as a one mana spell. It was basically both of these rolled into one and the costs also combined. Now the question is do you usually want to play both those in the same turn? And I think no. Like, no, usually not. Not just that, there's also no re not really any dual stack out there that I could make good use of this. But then again, the devolve effect by itself, like I I really it's really strong. I frequently run devolving missiles in shaman decks, and I would probably run the devolve spell as well. So I don't know, maybe this is good enough. I doubt it though. Especially if we get devolve separately. Like the evolve effect itself is also not that great. Generally, if you have a massive carpool. So this needs a ton of synergy to work. And we, we know there is some already. So maybe this will make more sense once we see more cards. Let's move on. Next up, Murloc Holmes. We already have that in duels. Huh, it was exactly the same name. Weird. It was already confirmed that um, cards that reference... Uh, cards with the same name like uh, Whirlpool or... Um, Flick Skyshiv, who isn't actually obtainable in duels at all at the moment, but will be at some point. And Sheikh Zara, the 6 mana 5 7 rogue minion that draws. It discovers a minion, uh, it discovers a card from your deck and then draws all cards with the same name. That they don't interact with this. So this is uh, still recognized as separate cards. So, what does Merlocomus do? Just like the duels treasure, it's a 3 mana 3 4. Murloc. This time a legendary though, not a like rarity less treasure. With Battle Cry, solve three clues about your opponent's cards to get copies of them. Now what this actually means is first of all, you see three cards. Uh, so how this works is first of all, you see, get a selection of three cards and you have guess which one of the three ones was in your opponent's starting hand. Like if the opponent has played a bunch of cards, it should be easily like achievable. Like you've seen them play the cards. If you if you play Merlock Holmes in your deck, you'll keep track of that. And if you're using some sort of deck tracker, you probably know 
especially if they keep track of that for you. Then the next clue is you get shown three cards again and you have to guess which of these cards is in the enemy's hand right now. Which is a lot more difficult, like uh, definitely not as easy to do as the first part, but uh, you know, there can be clues, like it really depends on the deck, but if you see certain minions, they would have been really good in the spot the enemies either they didn't play, then it's unlikely they have in hand, etc, etc. But this is a point where you can fail quite easily, I'd say. And then the third step is you see three cards again, and you have to pick the one that's in the enemy deck at the moment. So this is very similar to the previous one, just in reverse. And yeah, so if you're really, really good at guessing, and maybe if there are a ton of cards that give you information about the enemy's hand and deck, hmm, that could be a thing. Then solving this, solving these three clues should not be too difficult. If there is no help, it can be quite challenging. And in the end, all you get is some value. I mean, it's tons of value, but it's also random, and it's usually something uh, from a deck that has stuff that you don't really need that much yourself. So I don't really see him being that great in duels. Maybe he'll go into Drek'thar with War Commands, because he always wants neutral 3 drops with good effects. <laughs> I can see that. Maybe Murloc decks want Murloc homes. Mm. You could get a treasure with this. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I give him a solid chance to show up here and there. Especially if he's in buckets. But I wouldn't hold my breath for him being that great. <laughs> Let's move on to the next card. It's Sanguine Depths, and this is the first location card. This is a new card type that will sh start showing up with this expansion and will be in future expansions as well. This is um, something that we'll keep doing for now. As you can see by this different card border, like it's separate from spells, weapons and Minions, they all have their own uh, shape on their cards. This one's new. This one is a uh, warrior one. It's Sanguine Depths. It's a one mana location. Deal one damage to a minion and give a persona attack. So what happens if you play this is you get this thing on board. And as you can see down there, it has three durability. Which, that means this that thing will just sit on board. It doesn't. It can't be attacked or anything. It's, it's a bit like the dormant minions. In, in that way. And what you can then do is I can drag it around like you could drag around a minion and then choose a target for its effect. Just like you would do with a minion to attack. And what then happens is you do what the effect says. You deal one damage to a minion, give it plus one attack. And three durability means you can do it three times. However, you can only use this once per turn. And the locations have a one turn cooldown. Meaning you cannot use them back to back on every turn. So you drop to turn one and use it immediately because the enemy has some dude around you want to kill. You can then use it again turn three and then turn five. <laughs> Not every turn. And I really like this. It uh, drives a lot of decision making. Like, do I use this now or is it, should I hold it because I might need it next turn? And of course like this effect, deal one damage and give plus one attack. Uh, that is something Mori has always had and deck with plus one attack stuff. Uh, the rage stuff has never really worked that well. But it's just like one mana, do one damage three times, it's really good. Right? That, that, that is very efficient. It's just a very efficient card and I... yeah, I don't know how buckets with this will look and if there are any treasures that will interact with locations. I, I honestly doubt it because, you know, there, there won't be that many compared to other cards. But... yeah... Like, um, yeah, I, I think this card is solid. Need more context, of course, because there will be a be massive patch, okay, well, basically guaranteed before this stuff comes out, and we'll need a ton more context. But this card looks very, very good, very good by itself. So let's move on. A priest of the deceased, two mana, two three taunt, with infuse three, gate plus two plus two. Now a new keyword. What is infuse? Infuse means have this in hand while this many minions die and you get the effect. Meaning when you have this guy in hand and three minions died while he was in hand, he transforms into a new minion which would, will then be a two mana 4-5 taunt. It's a bit like corrupt in that way, it becomes a new card. 
Oh, yeah, this is solid. I don't really think there's a deck for that right now. Maybe there will be treasures and reasons to run infused cards. Once again, need to learn more about that. By itself, the card seems fine. Maybe the token demon hunter run this? Maybe. But in general, it's just a pretty generic card, and generic cards usually don't make it into duos decks that frequently because the starting decks are very tight. With only 15 cards, you can't make that many choices. So, yeah, I doubt this will be many starting decks, but maybe there will be reasons for it to be in there. So let's move on to the next card. It's Baroness Vaj. 4 mana 3 6 Naga. Legendary for Shaman. With the text, if this would transform into a minion, summon that minion instead. Now we have the, the first um, Evolve Synergy card. With a spell uh, we saw before. And you know, this effect is great. Like, it's really, really good. Like, uh, do you remember Unstable Evolution? 1 mana spell, transform a random minion into a random minion, cost 1 more with basically Echo. Well, that if if you if you make her stick and you you can pump out random five drops for one mana until you run out of mana or sports space. That's amazing. And you can run both of those cards in duels. Right, this is a card you can put into your deck. And uh, you just, oh, imagine you just evolve a three drop into her. That would be hilarious. And there'll be more synergy for this, of course, in this set. So uh, yeah, uh, this looks like something that could be nice. We'll we'll see. Uh, imagine if. Uh, the old evolution elixir treasure was was still in. That would be sick with her. So, <laughs> really fun, I like it. I don't know if there'll be a deck for it in duels, but it's a cool card. So let's move on to the next card. And that one is Dwarf Shadows. That's a rogue shadow spell, one mana with draw spell, infuse two, add a temporary copy of it to your hand. I assume temporary copy means you discard it at the end of your turn. So if two minions died while you have this in your hand, you can draw a spell for one mana, and you get another one, but you have to play it immediately. I mean, that's, that sounds very strong for Rogue. Of course, um, running this with very high cost spells in your deck bears some risk, because you might not be able to play the uh, temporary spell immediately. But like this hitting a good treasure spell card is just sounds amazing. Stuff like this is just good. It's not really I, don't know, I wouldn't put this in any current rogue deck, like there's pirate rogue out there and pretty much nothing else, and I don't think I'd put door shadows in there. You could get um ace in the hole with it though. That would be sick. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I doubt this will be in current decks, but maybe that'll be something new. Who knows? I mean, the card itself is very good. So, move on to the next one. It is another location. It's Muck Pools. And here is more Evolve Synergy. And it's really, really good in my opinion. So, one mana location with three durability. And the effect is transform a friendly minion into one that costs one more. It just evolve. Three times over five turns, essentially. Because of the cooldowns. And that's, you can set this up for Lady Vaj, of course. You play this turn 1, uh, maybe use it turn 2, when you, after you play a minion. Then on turn 3 it's on cooldown, turn 4 you play Vaj, uh, use Mug Pools on her and you, get, uh, you still have your Vaj, and a random 5 drop. That seems pretty nice. Again, okay, that, that seems really good. Yeah, I, guess, I love this card, however, once again, Evolve Shaman hasn't been a thing in duels ever. Maybe we'll get there. I guess that's the evolve totem thing. Like if you can stick that as well, because then it has stealth, it shouldn't be that difficult. And if Muck pulls up, you can evolve the Lady Vash twice. Well, that would be sick. Mm. <laughs> Next card Prince Renathon. This guy is available right now if you want to use him. He is a 3 mana 3 4 with your deck size and starting health are 40. What? What is this? In my hearthstone? Oh, this is amazing, I love the card. However, this is banned in duels. I already confirmed that uh, with the devs. 
Uh, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense in the mode it works differently, so it's not available there. So not really much to talk about. But in standard, this is a really awesome card. You can do... Like, this, is con this is a massive buff to control, essentially. 40 health uh, makes it really difficult to get overwhelmed while uh, before you can heal and stuff. Of course, a bigger deck size means that you'll draw your good stuff less consistently, so you're probably not gonna want this in an aggro or combo deck, especially not combo. But overall, love this card. It has some cool implications. I encourage you to try it for yourself. You'll probably learn more than just listening to me talking about it. Let's move on to the next one. It's Decimator Olgra. Oh, that's the same Olgra that Mancrig lost, by the way. Because we're now in the realm of the dead. I learned that today. <laughs> and so this is Mancrig's wife. And she is... Yeah, already dead. We're in the Shadowlands. And she's a 6 mana 3 7 legendary with battle cry, gain plus 1 plus 1 for each damaged minion. Then attack all enemies. That includes face. Like, wow, that's a ton of pressure. Can you imagine that with a ton of hand buff and uh, maybe brand bronze bit? Like, boo! That thing can go hard. I think uh, that's disrespectful. She can go hard. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know if the enemy has a lot to do, it's just oh, 7 mana, you play Whirlwind. Or you have the Ice Blood Garrison up and, and trigger the last turn, something like that. And of course the location helps. The, the one that does 1 damage and gets plus 1 attack. Yeah, and she can be a board clear, do a ton of face damage. Sometimes die in the process of course, because hitting a ton of minions will probably kill her. But it just seems like a card with a ton of potential. Seems really good. Very nice. I like it. For duels purposes, like the only real warrior deck right now is Warm Warrior. And she'll definitely not be in that deck. And they'll yeah, Bran run her? Probably not. So I don't right now there's no place for her, but things might change. Things might change. With the next patch. But that's all I have for her. So let's move on. How many other how many cards are left? Huh? Yeah, who knows? None. She was the last one. Brilliant. So yeah, I will uh, like every two or three days make a little review like this, talk about what I think these cards will mean for the duels mode. Uh, yeah. If you like these, please leave a like, subscribe, maybe leave a comment. Uh, you read all of them, you make me happy, I answer, <laughs> if there's anything to answer, and yeah, I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching, bye bye.